Hi everyone, Colin Chadwell back for yet another pottery video. Uh, this time I'm making a large vase structure. So I'm coming back from a long hiatus of, uh, like I said in the last video, from working on a tile project and I was just kind of getting back in the wheel so I had some extra clay so I, I made some bowls and this time I said, well, let's, let's make a vase. I haven't made a vase in a while too. So I have about, I don't know, maybe five pounds of clay here, maybe a little less. And I really don't have a shape in mind, which is usually not a, a tactic that I, I try to enforce. I try to let people think, like, you need to have an idea of what you're going to throw before you throw it. But I know I was just going for a, a tall base just so I could kind of practice doing some of these taller kind of pulls and getting clay up fast, which that pull that I just did was, was pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that pull. Um, that was pretty good, too. Those are two really good pulls back to back. I got a lot of clay up into the piece. You can see that I stood up here. Now that one, you can kind of tell that I kind of lost my grip at the bottom there, and that's kind of a problem that I have. I had to back the, sorry, I had to kick the camera here. I, my hands were covered in slip, and I didn't want to touch my camera or my tripod. So, um, But sometimes I'll do that where I'll, I'll lose the grip halfway through, and that can kind of throw you off a little bit. But I kind of got it back in here. And just using my rib tool and making sure that I'm holding onto the top of the vase up top so that it doesn't go wobbly on me and just kind of stretching this body out little by little. And then I'm going to come back in here and try to collar this top in. I like to have kind of a smaller closed in uh, vases I say now when I, I try to pull this up here I got a little too much of a pinch coming up there you can see that that little uh, wobble in the neck is from getting the clay too thin I, I pinched too much at once I didn't need to, I needed to slow down um, but I'm trying to just compress that clay back in but I'm just kind of gonna have to live with that thin part there and I'm just gonna flare this guy out a little bit keep coming back working out and then um, I'll probably just end up chattering. I think I do. Yeah, I end up chattering uh, over that that wobbly part anyway, so it's not as noticeable. So here I'm just going to use my uh, my Frank tool, the little wooden rib tool, to kind of just give this little little uh, flower rose petal look on the top. Let that dry. Come back smooth it later on. And now it's time to do some carving. And obviously I need to look at the level on my tripod because I'm a little off. Uh, looks like I'm kind of throwing or carving downhill here, which is an okay view, I guess. Anyway, so I'm up for the view. Um, Again, this had kind of hardened to leather hard, which is the right stage. I always find it difficult, though. Like when I'm never really sure on these tall pieces. Obviously, the top dries so much faster than the bottom, and sometimes the top's ready to be chattered like this, and the bottom is still a little mushy. So I kind of have to pick my time, and sometimes I'll go ahead and do If I know I'm going to do a detail like this on the top, I'll go ahead and do it up top, and then I'll come back later on and, and do this part. So I'm just trying to think of what I want to do here. So I'll, I'll use my little X-Acto blade to put some marks um, on the top and bottom where I want these cutouts to go and I decided to start out with just doing some little um, small skinny rectangular cutouts here and I try to do mine spaced out evenly there's some people that can just go right around and they know like I just need to do it here and here and here and they'll they'll end up on the other side and it's perfectly spaced where I have to do mine like a, you know I, I do opposite sides first to kind of get my four corners and then I think about what I'm going to do in between so I had that and I'm really trying to spend a long time thinking of like do I want to do like an oval kind of shape and I thought no I'll come back in and I'll put three more guidelines in, and I thought, well, I'll just keep doing the long, skinny rectangle shapes, but I'll just do them in a horizontal fashion this time. So I really like the contrast that is uh, shown here when you have a very organic-looking vase that has lots of these beautiful curves, especially the top. You can see it's it's really almost like a like like I said, floral kind of look. But then you contrast that with these very strict, straight, organic or sorry, geometric shapes that are being cut out. So I think it, it provides a nice little. Um, What's a good vocabulary? Dichotomy? Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. That sounds like a word. I'm going to use that word. I'm going to, if it's not a word, I've just made it up. Dichotomy uh, of geometric and organic. Look it up. Put it in Microsoft Word and see if a red line comes up underneath. But I don't think it will. So anyway, here's all my shapes cut out. And again, I just go through and kind of smear out those little guidelines that I put in here so um, they won't show up in the glaze process. And then again, I'll just take a, a damp sponge. Not a not a wet sponge. I always like wring them all the way out so they're completely damp and then just edge take up taking all the sharp edges here so here's the whole thing all finished i'll spin it around for you once here obviously i need to get a bigger background so you don't see my workbench but not a bad little start to uh throw in some more vases so i uh, hope you enjoy this one and come back for more